Greetings Shurians, Chaos here. One of the most requested build tip videos that I get is for furniture. It's something that I know I've wanted to do for you guys and it's something I've been planning for a while, but it's kind of a difficult topic to talk about just because of how vast it is. There's so much to talk about and so little time per video. So I've been planning it out and I think the best way for me to do that is just break it up into a bunch of different videos and cover it little by little. So today we're gonna to be looking at the four medieval style houses that I've been building since I started the series and we're going to be finishing them up with some furniture designs. So when it comes to furniture design for me personally, I like to keep things fairly simple. I don't like to have the building too crowded or too cluttered or anything like that. I do prefer to keep things nice and tidy and organized to make everything look like it actually has a purpose within the build and most importantly for me everything needs to fit thematically so it has to look like it would be long in there in order for me to use it as a furniture device so first off we're going to start with the all wooden peasant style medieval house that i built and we're actually not going to make this a house. Uh, if you could tell by my inventory choices, I'm going to be making this into a shop just to kind of give you uh, a look at how I might design uh, something like this. Because uh, like I said, furniture is vast and I'm not going to make everything into a house and just not give you guys a whole lot of insight into how I do furniture. But if I were to make it into a house, uh, I would keep the furniture very basic. Um, for the beds, I would probably do something like the shade wood bed because it'll stand out really nice against the brown. Uh, pearl wood would also look pretty good. But any of these basic beds, so the uh, rich mahogany, ebon wood, or just the straight up normal bed would look quite nice for this uh, first design of house here. So for a shop design, in terms of furniture, it's really quite simple because you can really do anything that you want. Uh, for instance, I'm going to build a custom shelf over here. And then actuate these so we could walk through it. And using actuated blocks is quite nice for custom furniture design. Uh, obviously, you won't be able to place anything in front of it, so do keep that in mind, but it does look uh, pretty decent. So we kind of have a custom shelf here. I'm just gonna stock it with various things that I might throw into a medieval style uh, shop. So we've got crates look really nice, uh, just standard chests look good kegs are a nice design uh, piece the ebonwood bathtub if you throw some brown paint on it and i did cover this in uh in the foundation the first build tip video but it does make a nice looking barrel so we'll just throw that in here as well and then we have rain which we'll sell <laughs> okay we could also place barrels which look quite ni quite nice in medieval shops uh, saves look rather nice as well. Um, stuff like that. Anything that you think might fit into the shop. If you don't want to have such a tall shelf, you could also put decorations on the walls. Uh, maybe a zebra skin or something. Um, don't quite have enough. Oh yeah, I got some room there for it. <laughs> but uh, you can do anything like that and just kind of mess around until you're happy. And since it's a shop, you could put anything in there that you would want to see sold. It's really up to your imagination at that point. So, also, what we could do is throw down a bar right over here. And I think bars make for pretty good uh, counters within the shop. Uh, mannequins are a nice touch for medieval style shops. Uh, any of these weapon racks or helmet racks 
look quite nice and make quite a bit of sense for a medieval shop. Uh, on top of the bar, I like to usually throw down a couple of gold coins. The reason why I do gold is because they visually stand out quite a bit more than uh, copper or platinum and you can't even tell the difference between platinum and silver, so I just prefer to use gold. Uh, in terms of lighting, I try to keep things like this rather dim uh, because when I think of a medieval build, I don't think that it would have a ton of light sources in it. So I'd probably grab a couple of these uh, oil rag sconce and just put maybe one on the outside of the house or one on the inside or just uh, maybe have a candle or a candelabra in here. If the shop is really big, maybe a chandelier or some lamps, but I wouldn't go over the top with lighting. A brass lantern is also a decent looking light source for this medieval style shop if you're not a huge fan of the oil rag scones. Another decoration piece that I like to throw into these medieval builds is cobwebs. They make for a pretty good touch. And not everything that I would consider furniture would be inside the house. And here I have a flying fish banner, which looks pretty much like a fish when you hang it. I also have the Arapaima banner. Uh, which is a really, really good looking hanging fish look, if uh, that's what you want. Also, you could paint that one brown to make it look cooked. It's uh, quite a nice look. It doesn't work so well with the flying fish, unfortunately. Another fish design that I like to do is uh, Ice Elemental Banner. And you're going to be like, what? I don't get it. But if you paint it with red paint, which of course I forgot to put it in my inventory so I'll just grab some real quick and once you paint it with red paint it gets this nice pinkish hue and it really just kind of looks like salmon that's been skinned already or uh, something like that just hanging and it looks like a raw piece of meat ready to be cooked or sold and I think it's a a nice little touch for a build such as this you could also just get rid of the banners and platforms and those little fences there and if we grab some deep paint of whatever color you want and some sail we can make it look like you're hanging some uh, cloth or fabric outside to be sold and so that's kind of how I might design the shop a little cluttered a little hectic it's definitely the most cluttered of my preferences, but it's something fun to play around with and you can definitely get really experimental with it and just kind of go crazy. For the second medieval house, it's kind of a little bit fancier and a little bit nicer, so I would also up the quality of the decoration a bit. Um, for the bed, I would probably go with boreal wood bed so I'm actually gonna start up here in the attic space and normally either I would uh, make this storage and put a bunch of crates and uh, barrels and what have you around but this time I'm actually gonna make it more of a bedroom loft just because we haven't covered a bedroom yet so I'm going to place the boreal bed up here right here just because it's a little bit fancier than the other beds that I would have used in the previous house and like I said this house is a little bit nicer looking so I feel it's, it's a nice fit and the boreal wood uh, since it's kind of a different shade of wood stands out a little bit better against the uh, wooden walls of the loft area so it kind of pops out more and doesn't blend in so much I also have the boreal uh, workbench here and I'm going to grab a shade wood candle just because it's kind of got a fancy handle to it so it's not as basic as uh, the platinum or the gold candles are. 
but it's also uh, fits within the theme. It doesn't look like it doesn't belong. And it gives off a little bit of light, not too much. Like I said, I like to keep things relatively dark in these uh, medieval style buildings. So I'll throw down a few more cobwebs around just to give a little bit more ambience to the build. And then I'm going to move downstairs. And while I work my way down, I'm just going to be placing some dynasty platforms just to have a little bit of a ladder here to get our way up. Normally I might build a stairwell in a house like this, but since I'm building the uh, furniture into a house that's already complete and I don't really have this house set up for a stairwell, I thought a ladder would probably just work best. You could also make the ladder out of rope. Well, it's totally your preference. I'm just going with the platforms for now. Oh, uh, one more thing before I finish up here. I'm going to grab this chest and I'm going to place it at the foot of the bed because I like having a chest at the foot of beds in Terraria just because it's uh, handy. I mean, you're going to be spawning in probably from death <laughs> and it could be handy to have a chest right where your spawn point is. So in the main living space, I'm going to go ahead and place a fireplace here. I'll either just use the fireplace item or I will actually just build a custom one with a campfire. There are pros and cons to both. Uh, the fireplace item is nice because you could put things on top of it. Um, like if I wanted to put this candelabra right here, I could. Or anything else that you want, it works as a, a table surface, which is handy. But you only have one appearance. If you were to build a custom fireplace, it would not have uh, space to actually place something on top of it. Unless, of course, you uh, put platforms on the top. But it would look unique. Uh, it'd give you a little bit more versatility. I'm just going to go with the standard one for now, though. And I'm going to bring some gray brick wall all the way up to the top here and then using some gray brick I'm just going to knock out that leaf there and put a chimney right on top so that we have a place for the smoke from the fireplace to go and in case you didn't know if you place a chimney and you hook it up to some wire and a switch and you activate it, it'll actually start producing smoke particles, which really bring a lot of ambience to a build. If you hit the switch again, it'll actually turn off the chimney, so no more smoke particles and no more animation. Press it a third time and you get the animation back, but no smoke particles. So for this kind of build on the outside, I tend to like to put a Cage lantern. It looks a little bit more fancy, but not much. Um, I'd probably change the wood here if I were working on the design of the house so that they actually connect because the living wood's a little bit high up right now. But we're just going to ignore that for now. You could also put paintings in here. They work quite nice. Uh, whatever painting you want, as long as it fits the theme and you're happy with it, of course. Uh, the banquet table is a nice fancier looking table and since we have this rock bottom layer here that's uh, gray, it actually stands out quite nicely against it uh, being brown. It would not look as good in the other house because of uh, <laughs> just a ton of brown I guess. Um, so the shade wood chairs are probably something I'd go with when he in here. They look a little bit more fancy. The red makes it look like they're padded. I might also go with boreal chairs if I wanted to. And I'll just put the candelabra on there. I'm going with the steampunk one just because it looks quite nice, in my opinion. A, a seedweed, potted seedweed, is a good touch for these kinds of builds. You could put mugs on the table, anything like that. Uh, another thing that you might want to do is to place some uh, platform above the window. We're just going to paint that gray and hammer it down and then using some 
I'm gonna use red paint. Grab some Medusa banners and place it on either side of the window and it kind of looks like curtains that have been drawn off to this side which is a nice little touch. It's not something I do too, too often, but it does look quite nice when it's done. Um, another thing that you might want to place in here is uh, some fancy dishes. They might look good either on the table or on a custom shelf. If you were to hang a shelf on the wall here, I'm just gonna put them on the fireplace. Didn't mean to paint them, but I'll just put those down there. Uh, again, with anything medieval, barrels look quite nice, or uh, just kind of random storage around. And that's pretty much as far as I would go in terms of decorating this kind of next step up of the peasant house. The third medieval build, this kind of fortress looking one, is gonna be a bit different. We're gonna go with a dungeon design. So I'm gonna grab some chain and just run it down the middle of the room to right here and grab some copper plating with some gray paint. And since it's a nice big open room, I'm going to hang a chandelier. Since I'm going with a dungeon appearance for this, I'm gonna hang the bone chandelier. It's nice and eerie and really fits the uh, theme of a dungeon and kind of sets the mood as the case may be. If you wanted to make the chains look a bit rusty, a great technique for that is to just slap some brown paint onto the chains. Uh, preferably for me, I like to do this towards the end. I don't like to do it at the top, so I'll have the brown down here like this, just to have a little bit of rust on it. And you could also do the same thing with the uh, lead bars in the window and just make it look a little bit rusted. So, Going to another bathtub, if you grab the flesh bathtub, it makes it look kind of like either a pool of blood, which I'm sure is mostly the intended uh, appearance for this, but also it kind of looks like a bloody altar, which makes it look like a nice table surface. <laughs> well, I say nice, but it's a torture chamber. Uh, a decent looking torture surface that has been recently used. It's got some blood on it, some blood on the floor. It really, really, really works uh, when setting up a torture chamber look. Uh, grabbing some bone block, if you place a single one, it's going to look like a skull, as long as it's not connected to anything that it blends with. For example, if I placed it right here, it blends with that and it can look like a skull, but there's a chance that it ends up like that and it looks less like a skull. But if we hang it from the chain, it's gonna look like a skull every time, no matter what, it's just gonna be in a different position. But it does make for a nice atmosphere touch, atmospheric touch to have the uh, skull just hanging. Uh, you could put it at the end of any of the chains or on top of a uh, bookcase. I wouldn't put it on top of a table because it is a solid block and it'll impede your movement through the room unless you actuate it. And if you actuate it, it just doesn't look quite as nice. So this is how I'd personally place it. Another uh, decoration item that you could add is bone lanterns. They look pretty good in this kind of uh, dungeon appearance. I'm just gonna put that on the outside. Or you could have uh, a hanging skeleton from one or more of the chains. If you got a single chain, I prefer to go with the upside down one, but if you have two chains that are side by side, like if I were to knock these out, then you could hang one right here and have it look lined up enough that it kind of appears to be uh, connected to two of the chains. Grab a gothic table. Uh, I'll probably end up painting it gray and using some living fire block you could just place it on top so you end up with kind of a custom looking brazier another thing that you might want to do is uh, take some platforms I'm gonna go with the bone platform this time and I'll also just paint these gray 
And on top of that, if you put a bone campfire, you, you get a nice eerie light in here that has even more skulls in it, which really fit the theme. They also look good if you paint it gray. It just kind of makes it look like it's made out of stone rather than being made actually out of bone. Uh, it's totally your call on that, but it, it does make for a nice ambient custom light source. So looking at weapon racks, uh, the carpenter rack or this sword rack or the uh, blacksmith rack, they all look kind of like torture tools when you place them in this sort of environment. Another light source that works quite nice is the skull lantern. The blue dungeon chest is kind of my go-to uh, chest for this sort of dungeon or torture chamber design, just uh, if I need some storage in here. You could also place these catacomb paintings, which every time you move, they give you a different one. So if you go back and forth, uh, my preference is this design particularly. Uh, that doesn't have any of the fancy framework around the edges. But it does look like you could have some stored bodies and cubbies in the wall. Uh, they're not going to quite fit with how small this current house is, but I just wanted to show that to you. Uh, the bookcase from the blue dungeon brick also looks quite nice in this sort of layout. I think I'll actually just leave that one in there with the skull lantern on top of it. One other detail that I might put inside the house is just grabbing some flesh block with some red paint and just pushing that onto a table surface maybe or onto the floor. It, especially if you hammer it, looks like a nice, well, it looks like a pile of flesh which could really help fit the uh, ambience of the chamber. I wouldn't leave it unhammered because you get these eyeball tips or uh, you might want to consider painting them deep red to kind of hide that a little bit, but it's not quite the texture that I'd go for, so I would just hammer these all the way down. Uh, the only thing to keep in mind is that it's a physical block, so it might impede your movement. So keep them away from doorways because you won't be able to walk into them. The only other thing that I might add to this house on the exterior is just grabbing some of this uh, shelf here, the wood shelf in particular, and I'm just going to paint it gray. And then beneath that, I'm going to grab some deep red paint and some sail and just kind of hang a flag which is a nice touch for these uh, kind of battlement looking buildings just because it gives a little bit more of uh, color and shape to the outside. I'm just gonna talk briefly about the wizard tower design because if I were actually going to design a wizard tower with a decoration in mind, I would shape it a little bit different to give myself more room to work with because as it stands it's really narrow at the base and there aren't multiple floors in this particular example so there's not a whole lot of space to work with but I can still give you a general look of what I might personally do uh, in terms of decorating this particular style of build. So I like to use purples and reds for my wizard towers. It's just uh, colors that I feel kind of fit a magical theme. Uh, so I have some crimtain brick right below my feet here, painted a purple. And I'm going to hang an obsidian chandelier from it. Now I really, really like to use the obsidian light sources for this kind of uh, build just because they shift between hues of purple and red in terms of their color and as I already stated I like to build with those color combinations for uh, wizard towers so it makes sense to me to use those kinds of uh, lights. I also like to use gothic furniture so I slap a little bit of red paint onto it just so it's not so gray 
and it stands out from the stone wall a little bit more than it might otherwise but the uh, gothic chair looks quite nice in here the gothic workbench works quite well in this kind of uh, design of a building I don't particularly use the gothic bookcase because I do like to paint the furniture and if you were to paint the bookcase the books get painted as well and I'd rather just make custom bookcases on the walls anyway uh, and you just do that by grabbing some platform in this case I'm using blue dungeon brick platform and uh, we would just paint that gray and just kind of throw some bookcases around uh, for wizard towers I like to make things not so even so I prime I'd probably make it look a little bit messy like that and just throw some random decorations around on it uh, books maybe a bone block for a skull or a skull lantern because I think that it also fits the theme quite nicely to have uh, a lot of bones and skulls in a wizard style tower. You could also use those uh, blue dungeon brick platforms to kind of make a custom light source. So if I were to just place two of them right here and grab some of the living demon fire block, it can make a pretty good light source. I probably wouldn't put it right next to the window. It's just uh, that's the space that I had to work with so I wanted to show it to you. The uh, crimson biome chest works quite well in here as well. Uh, I also like to grab some of these uh, death weed planter boxes and I also like to think that the wizard might also be an alchemist so these can grow plants or you could kind of make a little herbalism area outside and then maybe you could just put some fence at the end of it to just tie it all together and make it look like uh, some of the shelves kind of similar to what we did outside of the shop we can have a little alchemy section or anything like that uh, crystal ball is also a really good decoration to have in a wizard tower just obviously because it fits thematically and then I like to kind of place some crystals around just to I don't know I, I feel like they might be growing in a magical situation such as this so I do like to use them as decoration they give a little bit of a shine and a little bit of color to the gray wall and that is four examples of what I might do in terms of decorating these medieval style buildings with uh, furniture again nothing too fancy nothing over the top for me personally but I want everything to make sure that it fits the theme of the build and I just want it to make like make it look like everything belongs if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to leave a comment and let me know and leave a like it really really helps the channel out thank you all very much for watching I'll catch you all later happy building <laughs>